Welcome to the Comic Story on Channel, where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, we take some of the lore to your favorite video games, we break down what happens in a movie, and we turn it into an audio drama, a narrative allowing you to follow along with your favorite pop culture icons while getting on with your busy day. Today we're going to be continuing the storyline of the Justice League, as it is written right now in DC Comics by Scott Snyder, the storyline that is leading into the year of the villain. If you have not been following, I'll give you the link to the entire playlist down below, but to give you a quick synopsis as to what is happening, the Justice League has discovered something known as the Totality, while Lex Luthor has also discovered the Totality. He has created the Legion of Doom to battle against the Justice League, to try and bring together whatever the Totality can bring. But the question is, why did this happen? Where did the Totality come from? Well, in recent Justice League storylines, they broke the source wall. And when you break the edge of the universe, things happen, including things leaking into our universe. So in order to fix this, the Justice League has come to one idea, and that idea is to replace the source wall. If we can put it back, maybe we can prevent the end of everything from happening. There are many beginnings in this universe, but there has only ever been one end. A place where all slowly lose perspective. It is called the Promethean Galaxy. However, it is not truly a galaxy. It is a place of gods and giants as old as creation and home to the farthest finite border of reality itself, the Source Wall. For many members of the Justice League, it was their first time seeing something that they had only ever seen in psychic images or holograms. Each one of them looks and turns away. Everyone except Hawk Girl. Her eyes remained focused, as if the wall itself is calling to her. And deep down, it makes her want to scream. The ship they're in comes to a stop, and Starman exits, making his way to the wall, telling everyone to get ready and open up the first portal. Starman has come up with a plan to help repair the broken source wall. The method? Sealing it with the remaining Omega Titans. He can sense the doubt in everyone's mind, but he's paid no mind to it. He knows that this plan will work. The energy flowing through him is the totality of power in the universe. All of its fundamental forces exist in a spectrum inside of himself. He was sure that it would work. He knew that this would work. He could perform wonders that would make reality tremble. And if he could reseal the source wall, the end of all eternity would be prevented. As the first portal opens up, Orion of the New Gods states that he has acted. The Wonder Titan is ready. That's when the second portal opens, and through it, Ganthet of the Green Guardians brings the Wisdom Titan into position. Finally, the third portal opens, and Shiara Hall and the last fleet of Thanagar bring in the Mystery Titan. Hawkgirl watches, stating that this is really happening. This is... But before she could finish, she feels a powerful energy running through her wings and she shouts, No, not yet! Starman rushes back asking if she's okay. And when Hawk Girl tells him that she's fine, he tells her that it's just anticipation. She's just about to fulfill her cosmic destiny. Are you ready to save the multiverse, Hawk Girl? However, this plan was brought to her attention only two weeks ago. Starman sat with her and said that he had a plan to repair the source wall, and it involved her. Her wings, they show the map of a higher plane of existence, and that has something to do with the totality. Part of her mind was rebuilt after Luther destroyed it, and it was restored with the energies of the totality. Now that Starman is completely attuned to the hidden energies of the universe and the defense system meant to keep them locked away, he can see how things in the universe are supposed to be. The source wall was a protective bubble between them and the void, a shield meant to guard this universe from the unknown. And that shield was punctured in the battle with Barbados back in DC Metal. That brought forth the Omega Titans. They were the multiverse's first line of defense. They would find worlds ripe enough with their respective energies, absorb them, and then seal the wall with that energy. Brainiac made a miscalculation in the No Justice event when he pulled the four teams together. He didn't include Hawk Girl. She would have been able to communicate with the Omega Titans. Hawk Girl asks, what is he talking about? And Starman smiles, telling her that she too is a part of the last line of defense. The Entropy Titan was killed on Earth, but he can channel its energies through her wings. Along with the other Titans in place, they can heal the whole together. He's already discussed this with the rest of the Justice League, and they are currently working with Steel and the Titans. 
It's not just the League, it's also Oa, New Genesis, and Thanagar. They've all agreed to help seal the wall. Hawk Girl asks if this is already in motion. How can he be sure that it'll work? Starman tells her, because he can hear the heart of the multiverse. It wants this to happen. Hawk Girl then asks what will happen to her. What is on the other side of the source wall if she's involved at this? If her wings use her to bind the wall? Starman looks at her and says that that is what he wished to discuss with her. Back in the current time, the Titans are placed along the holes of the source wall, with the Martian Manhunter stating that the Titans, they're docile, content, like they know that this is their purpose. A few moments later, Hot Girl flies out in a full suit of Nth armor. She says that she is in the suit that Starman designed, and that she's gotta say it's surprisingly comfortable. Batman radios in asking, does she know where she's going? And Hot Girl tells him, yes, it's strange, like an instinct. The wall is opening a place for the Entropy Titan, but she can feel it calling to her. This is her place. The energy of the Entropy Titan, it's in the wings. Before placing herself into the Entropy Titan's place, there's a flash in her mind as she sees herself taken away to a wonderful place. She asks what is going on, and Martian Manhunter tells her that it is the psychic world, a construct in her mind, a slice of heaven, she could say. It's made from all of her favorite places. The beings inside of the wall, the ones that bound here for all of eternity, guarding this multiverse. They're still conscious, and he wanted to make it more comfortable for her. If this works before they leave, he will put her into a trance and let her live here in this heaven. She begins to cry, and Martian Manhunter asks what's wrong. She turns back kissing him, so Martian Manhunter pulls back telling her to wait. And she tells him that she knows he had a wife, and she's been with Carter in many lives. But this life... It's different. This ending is all hers. She wanted something that she could call her own. She knows it's selfish. Martian Manhunter tells her that no, it's not. There's something wrong out there. Back in reality. Superman stares, stating that he's supposed to be dead. He died in his arms. And that's when Brainiac and his ships appear. Within the ship, Brainiac tells the drones to attack. It was also two weeks ago that Brainiac opened his eyes again. And the first thing that he told Lex was that he made a mistake. Lex asked him what did he miss, and Brainiac told him that he didn't understand what he had. He tortured Starman to retrieve knowledge on the seven hidden energies of creation without understanding that he contained each of them himself. Starman could have been the key to unlock Perpetua from her prison, but know that he is the key to a graver threat. Lex holds up the doorknob stating that he already has the key. But Brainiac tells him that he's only unlocked four of the seven needed energies. The other three are unreachable as it stands. He will explain it in simple terms for simple minds. The Justice League has a key that fits two locks. They need to direct it to their lock, to the totality, to free Perpetua. If you're wondering who Perpetua is, she is the being that started it all. She is the creator of the multiverse and she is not a creator of goodwill. Superman crashes into Brainiac's main ship with Lex shouting that it's foolish to bring the totality in the midst of their enemies. Brainiac tells him that the ship can withstand the Kryptonian's futile efforts. The totality is stirring. She can feel him out there. Over the wall, Hawk Girl readies herself to be locked in place, and Starman tells her that he can channel the entropy energy that they need. The wall will feed on it and seal around her, and soon after this whole affair will be over. Please forgive him, but this will hurt. He begins to pour the entropy energy into her body, and as he does, a small device hits him from behind. Moments pass before he reaches back to destroy it, however, it's too late. His powers, they're gone. Inside a Brainiac ship, there's a blinding light radiating from the totality, and then a pair of eyes open. Fury inside of them, palpable, all-consuming. The giants, her great warriors, cry out from the wall, bathed in her energy, expelling it from their now open eyes. Everyone stops. Everyone turns to see something is wrong. Something that was never meant to be released. Perpetua, the first creator who made a dangerous self-sustaining weapon. She would be sealed in the source wall, but now she is free and she will not be imprisoned again. The gods of New Genesis can feel themselves being pulled away, but before they can do something, they vanish. And that's when the source wall begins to explode. Once, there was one hole. Now more appear. Shards of the wall breaking off. The Omega Titan screaming in pain. And then, crack a doom The sound, it's deafening. Shaking the very foundation of reality. The death of the source wall echoes in the souls of all of those who are present and beyond. The heroes watch, defeated, as Brainiac's ship fades away. 
they've lost. And now, the multiverse will die. Later, at the Hall of Doom, Brainiac asks what they should do now. Lex tells him that though it would be obvious for someone of a higher intellect, it's simple. They prepare for a war unlike anything the multiverse has ever seen. But not only is this the end of the multiverse, but there's something else that needs to be handled. What if Martian Manhunter knew a little prehistory of Lex? What if they knew each other? What if they could work together to prevent Perpetua? As Martian Manhunter stands in the ruins of Sha'an Valley, once the holiest of places for the Martians, he says in his language, the word Sha'an was sacred. It meant place of ancient memories. This place, no non-Martian has ever set foot here. If anyone knew his kind, his friends, if the Justice League knew. But before you decide your next move, just know that by bringing you here, I trust you right now more than anyone else alive. A gun is placed at the back of Martian Manhunter's head, and a voice tells him that that's unfortunate because this is where it ends for you. Memories begin to play out of Martian Manhunter and his family long ago. And Lex Luthor says that he's guessing, that's your family? The memory fades and Lex goes on stating, I'm afraid that there will be no more visits to memory lane. My suit projects a field attuned to telepathy, blocking it, along with your shape-shifting powers. You have five minutes to explain why we are here. Martian Manhunter tells him, fair enough. I need help finding someone. Someone I once met as a boy. He was a part of a group called the Legionnaires Club. There's no record of him. No tricks. No weapons up my sleeve. Lex stops him and says there's no weapons up his sleeve, but one behind his back. Martian Manhunter holds out Jaro, and Lex says, Did you think that you could use him against me? Jaro has already been poisoned by a psychic toxin. Nice try, though. Martian Manhunter pauses for a moment and says, No. What have you done? Lex laughs, telling him, don't be a sore loser. But Martian Manhunter tackles him, shouting, we need to move! Just then the ground rumbles as a giant creature bursts out trying to bite the two of them. Lex yells, what the hell was that? And Martian Manhunter tells him that he didn't bring Jaro here to trick him. Jaro was brought here to fend off the corners. The two narrowly escape, and Martian Manhunter begins to tell the story of the person that he met when he was a young boy. He was kept in a cage, and there were many people who came to see him. But with that group was a boy. He kept gesturing to his shirt, and that's when he saw it. The infinity symbol meant eyes and 10 to the 14th power, infrared light. When his eyes adjusted, he could read what the boy wanted him to see. He said that his name was Albi. Lex ignores the story, asking, what the hell are those things out there? But Martian Manhunter then explains that they are the corners, thought to be extinct. They nest in moons and sometimes planets. They feed on psychic energy, specifically on memory, longing, and regret. Jara was brought to block such emotions during their meeting. Lex laughs, stating, Regret? The way those things are going, they're gonna feast on you. Martian Manhunter says that he's not wrong about his regrets, but that is not what they're here to discuss. He asked him here to appeal for help for finding the man that he spoke of. If he can find this man, Albi, he'll go willingly with him anywhere. Lex says that there are many men named Albi. Hell, three work for him. Do you really expect me to believe that? Martian Manhunter places his hand on Lex's gun, telling him, I do, because it's true. This place, as I said, was sacred to my people. I came here once every 10 years to pray. We would come together and take bad memories from the great mind, our most painful ones, our regrets, and chant Sha'an, Sha'an. The memories would go into the ground where the corners would feed on them, and they would chant those words until the memories disappeared. Lex then says that it sounds like a religion that he could actually get behind. Dwelling on the past, where does that leave you? Martian Manhunter tells him most often, alone. When he felt alone, the boy would appear before him. He would ask Albi where they were, but Albi said that this place doesn't have a name. His uncle is the one who runs it, but it's for the good of mankind. He then asked what did they want, and Albi told him a sample. One where they can make something from Martian and human DNA. Albi also said that no matter what, they're never going to leave this place. Something about them all getting arrested or killed by the Blackhawks. They've been trying to stop his uncle's work for years, but maybe they could pretend they could leave? They would escape into their minds, a place where they were free and they were heroes. Just then, the corner screeches, and Lex says they do not have time for this story. Tell me how to escape this place, or I swear that. But Martian Manhunter stops him, telling him, I am telling you how to escape. Just listen. One night, the scientist came and told me that I was going to be set free, except Albi was crying. His shirt read that he was sorry, that they were going to kill me. Albi tried to stop them, but they wouldn't listen. He sabotaged it so that when they pressed the button, it would send me away. He told me to remember that they all weren't bad. And then one last message appeared in that infrared. Albi said his real name. He told me his name. He turned it around 
and it read Alex, short for Alexander. Albi was short for LB, meaning L2, Luther number two. Alexander Luther one was Lionel, your father. Your Albi, Lex, you can stop this. Lex stares, telling him to shut up, but Martian Manhunter tells him, it's true, they took your memory. Lex punches Martian Manhunter, shouting for him to shut up. The confrontation caused a psychic ripple, and the corners quickly attack. Martian Manhunter takes Jara back, stating that this is their only chance, and they can control one of these beasts. But Lex tells them that the slimy beach trash is useless. They need to. One of the corners then lunges at Martian Manhunter, but as he dodges, he slaps Jaro on top of it. And Jaro weakly says, I am not slimy. The two jump on the corner, and Martian Manhunter yells that Jaro did it as they escape. Martian Manhunter shouts, that they're almost there, but he must hear the rest of the story. After the escape, the Blackhawks came for his father and his team. They let him live, but they erased his memory of the whole ordeal. They left him with nothing more than a sense that he had once been a part of something grand. Left Lionel a drunk and broken man. The father you knew, that you grew up in the shadow of. But he'd taken precautions. He left you something, a clue, a relic that you've been using. A piece of the totality found in the past. You once told me that humans were good, that you were good. The Martian keep wiped my memories. Both of us were taught to forget the pain, the regret, the hurt. It's who we are. It allows us to reach higher together. As the coroner gets closer to the two portals, Martian Manhunter says that they did it side by side. Don't go to your portal, Lex. Come with us. Lex struggles to make a decision, realizing that in his past he worked with Martian Manhunter, that there is good in man. But as the coroner crashes, Martian Manhunter jumps through the Justice League portal and Lex jumps through the Legion of Doom portal. As Martian Manhunter lands, Batman asks, did it work? And he tells him that he should have told everyone his intentions. He just needed to. But Batman stops him, asking, did it work? Martian Manhunter tells him that he doesn't know. He can only hope that some part of what he said got through. Meanwhile, over in the Legion of Doom headquarters of Lex, Brainiac asks, where is the Martian? He was to capture him and bring him so they may gather information. Lex looks away, telling him that the Martian has nothing worth learning. As he goes to his room, he holds the relic in his hands. Any chance? Shaan. Shaan. And that gets us caught up to the next storyline, The Sixth Dimension, where we see where this is all going. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see the next episode of the Justice League storyline, and that will get you mostly caught up to the Year of the Villain, which we're going to be covering very soon. It's the DC event of this year, Year of the Villain. You want to be a part of it, right? Sub to our channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I will see you next time right here at the Comic Story and Channel.